Hi everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'm going to go over my uh, game from today. I played in the Croatian Chess League. Uh, before I start, I would just like to say uh, a great thank you to everyone, who, to everyone who has been supporting the channel these last few days. It really does mean a lot. Uh, so, about the game. Uh, we were playing uh, a much stronger team. I played board one because our uh, uh, women FM uh, board one, Mihaela, was away this round and she couldn't play. So I got to be paired up and uh, instead of board two, I was on board one. I faced a Croatian candidate master rated around 200 points higher than I am. And uh, I had two possible opponents. One of them was uh, this gentleman I played and the other one was even higher rated. They usually play uh, board one and board two. I wasn't sure who I was going to be playing. And uh, both of them played the English opening most often with white. So I've been preparing the last couple of days for the English and I've devised a whole new system against it, uh, changed up what I play usually spent a lot of time and uh, what do you know uh, when we sat on the board my opponent played pawn to e4 so well uh, my preparation went down down the drain but i was happy to play the caro Khan, which i'm very comfortable with uh, by the way i'm going to run an engine analysis at the end of the video i've been looking at the game myself for now and i'm going to walk you through my thoughts and uh, the engine analysis will be just to confirm my mistakes. For this game, I'm not going to be using any Grandmaster game examples in my analysis because we went out of book very, very fast and I knew every move up until that point. So, okay, I played the Karo Khan, d4, d5, e5, the advanced variation, bishop to f5. And my opponent, despite being a very experienced player, his peak rating was over 2200, uh, he played bishop to d3. Now, Bishop to d3 is not a bad move, uh, but it is a bad move, and it equalizes for black immediately, because uh, this bishop on f5 uh, is black's worst piece, uh, and worst piece. And what black wants to do is get rid of this bishop or put it outside of the pawn chain and play, play e6 and not have it, have it be a nuisance on c8, like a French defense bishop. So whenever you get this opportunity, you trade, queen takes, and you play e6. Now, during the first five moves, white has the queen out, has a weakness on d4 that he's either going to have to defend with c3 uh, or else i mean what else he can do he can he can play c4 but then he has a permanent weakness and black managed to create this strong pawn triangle so according to the engines according to theory and according to human perception of chess black is equal here and i was very happy to achieve this position uh, he played bishop to e3 here which is not the most common move knight f3 is better but regardless of that this position is already weird for white now uh, the <clears throat> the main move is knight to e7 going into e5 going into f5 but here i decided to create a setup which i like playing uh, in the advanced Karo Khan, which isn't the best, but it can create a lot of problems for white, especially if he marches his queen out too early and uh, neglects his development. So the usual move order here, after bishop f5, is either knight f3, bishop e2, or knight bd2, something else, but actively developing your pieces. And in this, in this position, I mean, black is equal. So I decided to go for my setup. My setup is this. Knight d7, knight e7, h6, g5, bishop g7, knight g6. And this way I'm going to have a very compact position. I can castle queenside or kingside. I can play f6 as a pawn break or c5. So I went for that. I played knight to d7. He played knight to f3, knight to e7, castles and h6. I know that h6 isn't the most precise move. Usually after castles, players with black play knight to f5 and after either knight b to d2, or something else, the, the game could follow like this, knight b to d2, bishop to e7. Well, white can also play instead of knight b to d2, uh, bishop to g5, and then bishop to e7. But knight b d2, bishop e7, uh, white can now play c4, which is one of his most active moves. d c4, knight c4, knight b6. And this position is slightly better for black with the queen on d3. But usually when the pieces have developed, it's equal. So I played h6, not going for knight to f5, because I like my setup. Uh, he played a very bad move here. I mean, I just don't understand this move. I could understand it if I played anything else instead of h6. He played knight to h4 here, and knight to h4 is just a silly move. I mean, this move doesn't really do anything. Now I have two options. I can either play g5, 
accelerating my setup, which I ended up playing in the game, or I can play c5, opening up the position and attacking this knight once my knight gets to the newly freed up c6 square. And after c5 he has to play c3, he has no other option, otherwise e5 is terminally weak, so c3, knight c6, now I'm attacking the knight, and now the knight simply has to go back, and he wasted two tempi, he played knight h4, knight f3, so he wasted two tempi for nothing, now black is definitely better, especially with the mistake of queen d3, of bishop d3 takes queen d3, and knight h4, knight f3, so in this position I'm, I'm much better, but I wanted to go for my setup with g5, which I figured was also okay, because knight h4 is also a waste of tempo, uh, knight to f3, and now I had a big branching of ways, and I had to decide what to do. I was already very happy because I knew that I was more than equal. He already made two mistakes, and this is move 10. Uh, by the way, we were out of book uh, after castles, age 6. There are, all, there are two games played from this position, Grandmaster games, and after knight h4, of course, there are none, because it's just a bad move. So g5, knight f3. Here I had a choice to make. Uh, one variation which I actually calculated for about 10 minutes was g4, uh, knight f to d2. Knight to h4 I thought was a bad move, uh, but I'm not sure what I would have played. I think I would have just kept the knight here and continued my development. But still, I think knight h4 is a misplaced knight. So I was calculating knight, uh, g4, knight f to d2, knight to f5, c4, d4, knight c4, b5, chasing the knight away, knight cd2, and now I have a trick knight takes e5. So this was my calculation, and I figured that g4 is going to be a very strong move. And uh, after knight to f3, g4, I mean, if he goes to, to h4, I'm going to see what the engine recommends. I guess I can just ignore that, because the knight has no squares. If he ever plays g3, then that's just inviting h5, h4, if he ever moves the knight. And I thought that the knight would just be misplaced here, I would continue my development normally. I was going to play either c5, or because it now loses a pawn, knight b6, or queen to b6, and castles. My first idea was queen b6, putting pressure on b2, and castles, and just put my rooks on g8, h8, and march up the board, play f6, open up the position this way. Uh, my second move uh, was c5, but for now it just loses a pawn, so I couldn't play that. And my third option was queen to b6, putting pressure on the b2 weakness, and I figured that I'm, I can play g4 after that, because after queen b6, knight c3 or knight b to d2 indirectly defending the pawn because then b7 is hanging i can play g4 and transpose just castle immediately if he plays knight h4 and put my rook on g8 so i figured that queen to b6 shouldn't be a waste of tempo so i played that queen b6 and here uh, i i can't understand his next move either i could understand it afterwards but during the game i was just puzzled <coughs> he played a very bad move here he played g4 and uh, yeah, instead of that, knight here or knight here makes a lot of sense because I can't take b2, I'm going to play g4. But he was probably worried about g4, uh, me playing g4, so he played this in advance. But now I have two options and I really can't say which one is better before I use the engine. One of them is of course to just win a pawn. And the second one is to play h5, castle queenside and just crush him here. So if I play h5... He has to play h3, otherwise I'm going to take with the rook and have everything. So h3, hg4, hg4, and now I can play c5 or castle. I figured I should be playing c5, which is more active. Uh, castles, bishop g7 is fine too, I guess, but I think he has time to escape, and my pawn is hanging, so I have to be active. So c5, knight b to d2, c d4 must, was my calculation. Bishop takes d4, and now either queen to c7... Uh, or queen to c6, uh, putting pressure on the c2 weakness. So I thought that this was this position was very fine, but I didn't want to lose my pawn, my g5 pawn, and I really wasn't sure about what happens after castles, knight takes g5 and this pressure here, because my rook can't defend from h7. So I didn't want to get into this. So after g4, I just took the pawn. I mean, why not? I, I'm just a clear pawn up. Uh, here he played knight to c3, uh, if he now plays knight b to d2, then I have queen to b5, and he has to exchange the queens, otherwise uh, this square is taken, this square is ridiculous, and I'm going to be better, so he should exchange, and this way I'm stopping the move c4, I'm going to reinforce, put my rooks on the c file, and just win the game. So knight c3 was necessary, he played it, queen b6 in anticipation of rook to b1, uh, and here another weird move, a4, I mean, that, that's a common maneuver, 
uh, common pawn push with which you restrict the pawn majority. But in this position, I think it was just a waste of time. Time. So I continued to go on with my plan. Uh, H5 here I considered, but I didn't want to open up the position. I wanted to castle because it was clear that I can't castle queenside. Now coming back to that, uh, castles, which I play later on, was I think my biggest mistake of the game. Uh, so knight g6, I continue with my plan. Rook f to b1, queen to c7, rook to b2. Another weird move, uh, and here I thought I was already much, much better, because any doubling up of the rooks uh, just makes no sense, because I can either play b6 or rook b8. And here I had a dilemma, either bishop g7 or bishop e7, but I figured bishop e7 was much better, defending this weakness as well as the diagonal, so bishop e7. Here he played a5, another time-wasting move, doesn't really stop b6 after I castle. So... I mean, a5, I really, I can understand it, but I think it's a bad move. And now, yeah, uh, now I made a mistake. Now I castled. Instead of castles, I have two incredible moves, h5 and c5. My king is pretty safe on e8. I don't think anything can happen to it. I need to open up the position. I'm a pawn up. If I manage to activate my pieces and uh, cramp his pieces down, then I'm just going to win. So h5. Uh, a great move. Uh, if he takes here, I take with the rook. And I actually found, <clears throat> as soon as I castled, I actually found uh, what happens after h5, h3. Uh, I'm just winning the position because now I can play hg4, hg4, rook h3. And if he plays king to g2, I can just take. King, uh, rook takes f3. And after king takes f3, I have an amazing tactic. Uh, hopefully you can see that just winning uh, knight g5, d5. 95 winning the queen and that's it so after h3 hg hg rook h3 he can't play king to g2 uh he has to move the knight and then everything is coming this way a sacrifice here i think if he moves the knight i can just sacrifice here and he's going to be in a lot of trouble he can't really do anything i didn't calculate this precisely yeah he can't even take because his queen is hanging so yeah, th this is just bad. So h5 was a very good move, and uh, instead of castling, this would have been much better. The second move I wanted to play was c5 and open up the position that way. After knight b5, queen c6, a6, b6, my position is perfect, c3, c4. I've closed down the queen side. Uh, I'm not going to castle, obviously. I'm going to keep my king on, e on e8 for now. But I got rid of all my weaknesses in this position and I can just play h5, open up the position and win. So these two moves, in my opinion, were great. Instead of that, I castled. The thing is with castling, which I was aware of, that if the pawn is on g5, which happens in the Karokan and I've played it, and the white pawn is on g4, then h4 and h5 conversely are very good pawn breaks, and whoever has a safer king behind these pawns is going to win. So castling simply allows h4 for my opponent, and well, uh, here I realized that as soon as I castled and he played king to g2, king to g2 is a very sensible move. Here, perhaps wasting time, but preparing rook to h1. And I'm not sure what the engine is going to say, but from a human perspective, I was scared. I'm a pawn up and I'm scared. I knew I had a better position. It's, it's not really relevant whether who's better or here, because I am better. I have, I'm a pawn up and my position is safe. But I can see an attack coming and there isn't much I can do with my king on g8. And that's why castles was a mistake. My opponent is inevitably going to play h4, rook h1, get his queen over here, move his pieces out, and I'm going to be in trouble. After he plays h4, I have no good options. If I take on h4, bishop takes... I'm sorry, bishop takes h6. If I, after h4, play knight, check, bishop takes, pawn takes... Uh, he has g5, so he's going to open up my position, and king g2 prepares that, prepares putting the rook on the, on the g and the h files. So here I, I had one of my biggest things of the game, and uh, I figured I need to get some counterplay. When your opponent is playing in the center, you play on the flanks. When your opponent is playing on one side on, on the board, you need to create counterplay on the other side of the board. So the only logical move, c5. I want to open up the position. Knight b5 was expected, queen c6, c3, he has to defend the pawn. And now uh, I think... To one of the two biggest mistakes I've made in the game, castles... No, one of the three mistakes. Castles is one of them, my next move is the other. 
Here there was a very obvious move which I considered, just chasing the knight away. If he takes here, I can take with the bishop, he takes and I, I don't have to take the pawn immediately. I mean, I'm not forced to take, I can just take it at my own leisure. I can play c4 or open up the position, defend my pawn and then take. So this, this was a move. Instead of that, I defended my pawn first and I played rook f to b8. And this now just allows a much more powerful h4. And now I was scared. This was my longest thing of the game. And uh, one thing I knew for certain is that I must have messed up my position a bit and that I wasn't that much better anymore. I was really scared of his attack. Uh, I spent about 30 minutes here, had my longest think and uh, decided to let go of my pawn. Obviously, if I let him take, uh, I have two defenders, he has three attackers, he's going to win a pawn. The other options, uh, g takes h, are no good. And knight f4, I thought, was no good either. So now I knew I had to create attacking chances. Now after a6, he can't really play this because I win a pawn. So I calculated that I'm going to have enough counterplay after a6, knight a3. Uh, two moves were good here, in my opinion. Uh, one of them was b6, one of them was b5. Uh, c4 was also an option, but I didn't consider that. And before playing a6, I calculated b5, so I played b5. And b5, if he takes some passan, is just a better position for, for me, a pawn up. Uh, so obviously he's going to take here. And this is what I figured. If, uh, if my opponent takes the g-pawn, which is his only good move, then I have b5 and b4, I'm sorry, and I'm going to have a lot of activity on the queen side. He did take. And now uh, this is the move I'm very sorry about. I didn't take enough time. <clears throat> before calculating a6, I calculated... Uh, bishop takes, knight takes, h takes, bishop takes, and that's it. I didn't even consider taking with the h pawn. Now I think that h takes is much better, because uh, if he takes with the bishop, and I take with my bishop, he can't recapture with the knight, because I always have knight to f4, four, four king, king, and, king, king and queen. So he's forced to take with the knight, which gives me time, and gives me a check if I need it. So he can't really win a pawn comfortably. So h takes was a much better move, but I took with the bishop, now I think the position is uh, equal or slightly better for him. Knight takes, h takes, bishop takes, c takes. Uh, yeah, this was my second dubious decision. Uh, I think, I think, uh, well, I wanted to look for a counterplay still, because I can't just allow uh, rook to h1 and f4. f4 is his strongest move. And now I was already very worried I thought I messed up winning position and I I thought I was in trouble. So his threats are f4, rook h1, queen h3. After that I can resign. If he plays f5, <coughs> f4, f5, removing my knight, rook h1, queen h3, I'm done. I'm done and I just, I, I just can't play anymore. So uh, two moves I was considering, b4, and after c4, uh, rook takes b4. And after rook takes, pawn takes, removing the knight, knight to c2, and now rook to b8, defending my pawn. I thought this would give me enough counterplay because he can't really play rook h1 comfortably. So this was one of my moves. After bishop takes g5, uh, I ended up, <coughs> ended up playing c takes d, knowing that rook to c1 is coming because I thought b4 was stronger after that. He has to take with the c pawn, of course, c takes, and now b4, and my calculation was... Uh, if uh, if rook here happens, uh, then I can play queen to a4, and the knight is pinned to the rook, I'm going to win the knight. Uh, if he just moves the knight to c2, if he plays knight c2, then I have queen c3, and just forcing a trade because the queen can't defend the rook, and I'm just winning there. Uh, rook to c1 was the critical move, of course, I looked at that, and my calculation was queen a4. Now, the move I looked at was knight here. And uh, yeah, let me just point out one thing. After b4, rook c1, I can't take and take, because after I take here, he first takes my rook with check, and I can't uh, get a queen. So queen a4, knight b1. Uh, yeah, and here I thought I was worse, and uh, I thought I was losing, and I'm going to check with an engine, but I think I was losing. So, uh, I'm still trying to stop f4, f5, rook h1. I'm in a lot of trouble. So I found three ideas. One of my ideas was b3, 
And after some move, I don't know, I think knight d2 would be the most sensible move. I was looking at ideas like this. Uh, knight takes, yeah, I need to take, okay, knight takes here. Pawn takes, queen takes, but then he has this defense and I'm just losing this position. There's nothing here. He can't check me here because I have a check. No. Yeah, he can actually do this as well. So b3, knight d2, I couldn't really play my tactic. This didn't work. And uh, I was looking at knight e5 for the last 10 moves, but I couldn't make it work. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you that in one more position here after b5. Yeah, before b5. After knight a3. Uh, this was constantly a threat because my queen was here, so any uh, d4 push would be a check. So in this position, if he takes with the knight, uh, I'm much better because I have this check. And uh, I don't know, he plays this, I, I'm, I'm winning the position. So after knight takes d5, he needs to take with the pawn. And now the position doesn't really work. I can still play here. But he now has time to, to move his bishop, and now I take here, he has time to defend the knight. And I thought I just couldn't play this position out, and I thought, well, I don't know, I can, I can take here, I guess, takes, takes, I have some pawns, but it's, it's a bad position. So this move, uh, knight takes e5, was constantly on my mind. cd4, cd4, so b4, uh, rook c1, queen a4, knight b1. And here, as I said, I thought I was in trouble, so I decided to go for a trick. Uh, b3 was one of my moves. Queen to a1 I also considered, uh, but this doesn't work. Uh, I mean, I have nothing. Once again, I could take on e5 and take with the queen, but I don't have anything. So, uh, I thought I was in a lot of trouble, so I decided to go for a trick. Queen takes a5. And uh, I actually thought I messed up a winning position already. Here he played rook to h1, expected f4 was the second candidate, and now my trick was queen to d8. Uh, my trick is to exchange the queens, of course, with knight f4 check. If I exchange the queens, I'm just winning. Now I'm two pawns up and my position is perfect. Uh, sorry, one pawn up, but I have two passed pawns. And uh, I saw that he can play queen to e to e3 and win the position. This, I think, is just winning for him. I, I'm not sure what I can do to defend really tough. I mean, perhaps queen to f8 is the most sensible defense trying to get around my king, but after f4, th this is just lost. I mean, another thing I was banking on after queen to d8 was him retreating his bishop somewhere, and then f4 isn't as strong because his bishop isn't here. So I either wanted to chase the bishop away or exchange the queens, but he didn't play queen to e3. Uh, he took, after queen to d8, he took bishop d8, and this is now just game over. Black is winning. There's nothing in the position for for white. Check here, here, here. He took, uh, he played rook to d2, and they took the f2 pawn. He has no time to save the bishop because I have this check. He took my knight, took the bishop, two pawns up, winning position, and... Uh, this was easily converted, uh, I'm going to show you. He had one threat here, trying to make a threat with rook f6, but this threat doesn't really work. He doesn't have anything, I just played rook to c7. After rook h6, he, he has no checks. He has rook h8 check and g, g7 is, h7 is covered, he has nothing. So I just checked him to pin the knight, played knight g6, he resigned. But... Uh, a very risky game, and uh, <clears throat> I should have anticipated his attack sooner. Let's check the game with an engine. All of this is fine. Uh, a mistake, you can see that the position is already equal. Takes, takes, e6, bishop e3, knight e7. Fine, fine, fine. h6, a slight inaccuracy, I know that, but I love these positions. Knight h4, better for black. You can see that. This is just a bad move. So c5 is best, apparently. Because, yeah, he has to retreat the knight anyway, and g5 is now weakening my position. So, c5, c3 was correct, knight c6 was correct, and he has to retreat the knight. So, knight f3, bishop e7. Yeah, my analysis was correct, but after knight h4, g5 still has to be good. The evaluation is the same. Minus 0.4. Knight f3. And now, yeah, g4. g4, knight f to d2 was correct. What happens on knight h4? Yeah, just c5. So, yeah. What about queen b6? Queen b6 is no good. Why? 
Okay, so c5 was the move. But anyway, after knight f3, g4. I played queen b6, b6, which was okay. g4, yeah. Ah, uh, losing for white <clears throat> after h5. Yeah. I should have played h5. Let's see my analysis. h5, h3 correct, h takes correct, h takes correct, c5 correct, knight bd2, cd4, bishop d4, and I played queen to c7. So my analysis was correct up until this point, and black is better, but after queen c7, can't he just take here? What's wrong with this move? Black is much better, but <clears throat> there's some chances for him, I mean... So I'm not sure about that. But anyway, queen takes b2 was an okay move. Uh, knight to c3... How is this okay? I thought this wasn't okay. Queen here. Takes, takes. Black is much better, this is not okay, so knight c3 was better, I guess. Minus one for black. Queen b6, okay. a4 was the best move. a4 was the best move. Come on! <clears throat> okay. a4. Uh, knight to g6, continuing with my plan. Rook f to b1, chasing my queen away. Queen to c7. Rook to b2, yeah. Rook to b2 increases my advantage, it's actually a bad move. Because there is no use to double up the rooks. I played bishop e7, which was okay. a5. And now let's see about castles. I think this was my first serious mistake. Castles? Yeah. My advantage drops and h4 immediately should be played. Let's see about h5. h5. Uh, first, let's calculate h3, which I thought was winning. Takes, takes rook here. So yeah, he has to defend his knight. And this is minus 4. If he place here let's see if my sacrifice yeah my sacrifice did work yeah so okay this is just winning after h5 g takes h5 rook takes h5 is minus 2 almost minus 2.3 now and he can't defend that so h5 was definitely move but castles king to g2 minus 2 why is king to g2 a mistake i did play c5 knight to b5 here here c3 everything correct and yeah i have minus 3 here and i messed it up with rook f to b8. I think this was my biggest mistake in the game. Minus 1.6, still okay. h4 he did play, a6 I did play, knight to a3, and now c takes d4. Yeah, this is this was my cal calculation. cd4, cd4, But I wanted to play knight d takes c5. Which is also okay. Pawn takes d4, pinning the knight, and after the bishop moves, knight takes c5. I think this is great for me. I mean, I, I have too much activity now, and a lot of past pawns. But anyway, after knight a3, I played b5. Ah. Okay, hg, and yeah, taking with the h pawn was correct. I'm sure he can't take now, yeah. He has to put some more pressure. After bishop takes, uh, almost equal. Knight takes, h takes. Bishop takes, and now, yeah, b4 immediately was a move I considered. So b4 takes, rook takes, rook takes, c takes. Now, all my analysis was correct. Rook b8, rook b1. Queen a4, knight a1. And this is better for black. Yeah, he doesn't have an attack anymore, my pawn is too strong. But after bishop g5, cd4, ah. Uh, yeah, plus one. This this was the blunder. From minus three I went to equal and then to plus one. But the position was very complex with all of his threats on the on the king side. I just wanted to get counterplay as soon as possible. cd4, cd4, I did play b4. Rook c1, queen to a4, knight b1, yeah. Now I'm just losing the game. I mean, b3 apparently was the best move, and knight to d2. And now this. Defending, defending. Yeah, I, I'm not sure this can be defended. He just has too many threats. 
And my move then must be a lot worse. Queen a5. Ah. Oh. This is just a losing position. <clears throat> Yeah, f4 was apparently better than rook h1. <laughs> this move I did look at. Queen d8 plus 3. Oh my god. Yeah, queen e3 just defending. Queen f8 was my move, but now I'm... I'm just dead lost. Let's see if I can save my knight. Takes, takes, queen here. <laughs> just giving up my queen, it's a forced mate. <sighs> yeah, but after bishop takes d8, I have to be winning. Yeah, okay. So the position went from plus 3 to minus 3. I'm not going to analyze it anymore with the engine. So there are a lot of lessons to be learned from this game. I think I played correctly, trying to find counterplay after I messed it up. But here, after queen takes b2, I just had a safely winning position. Knight c3, queen b6, a4, here, here. This was all fine. This was all correct. And now just stage 5. Just open up the position. Keep my king in the center. Yeah, and when I did mess up with castles, uh, I got great counterplay. I played everything correctly. Yeah, h takes was much better, not exchanging the defender. Yeah, and uh, c takes d was the, was the crucial error. So yeah, uh, but I, I won the game, I'm very happy, it was a stronger opponent. Uh, well, uh, I guess you could argue whether it's a deserved win, I was much better for 90% of the game and then I messed up, but I tactically won anyway. Uh, unfortunately, we lost as a team on six boards. Uh, boards two and three were completely winning for, uh, for us and then they both drew just bad and we could have won the match, but we didn't. It was three and a half to two and a half. So yeah, uh, a lesson in the advanced Karo Khan. I hope this helps if you play it. Uh, let me know what you think of the game. Once again, thanks very much for the support and uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.